today I'm going to be learning more about the hockey legend, the greatest of all time, Wayne Gretzky. And this video is called Wayne Gretzky was already a legend in Canada at 10 years old. Tell me if that's the case, tell me if you knew of him when he was young. Uh, again, tell me what you think about him, what does he mean to Canada? As a hockey fan, what do you think about him? What was he best at and so on? And what was he like when he was a child? Was he like that well known? Uh, let's just watch and learn more about the, the legend himself. 10, 11, 12 years old, I was playing in arenas that yeah. were selling out. That's like crazy. Three, four, you were like five, a circuses in town. A little bit. And I mean, not that, like that, but, but like you I know what you mean. Yeah. But in Wait a minute. So was that the case? So he was selling out arenas at that age? So he really was a legend? Like, tell me if you were at any of those matches. How did that come to be? How did he get to that point so young? Was he just amazing from very young? How did he even get like picked up or scouted or anything like that it's quite a quite a rise for such a young person in those days too it was such a big world because there was no internet there was no cell phones mm. and so yeah. a, a, a kid might be three hours away <clears throat> and, you'd we, hear about we, and you would hear about him and then when you play against him my dad would be in the car and, and after the game <clears throat> he would say to me his favorite line was always no matter how good you think you are there's somebody out there better than you and I'd say, okay. And even when I was 15, 16, when people said, okay, he's going to be a professional hockey player, my dad never one time said, you know, oh, he's a can't miss or he's going to make it. I mean, he hoped because he knew how much I loved it. But he never pressured me. The only thing he pressured me about is he would call me, say, you didn't miss any classes today. So oh, really? Like, oh, yeah. He, I said, Dad, I don't miss class because if I miss class, the team – so I was playing junior hockey – and it was hard because we practiced every day and we travel a lot. Yeah. And so they were all, the team was always on you, like, you better be in class. So he was more concerned that I was in class. I remember I was uh, 17 and I had this uh, school teacher and he, it was, I was taking a physics class and I hated physics and chemistry. It was, I kept thinking, now where is this going to, where, where am I going to use this in the world? Yeah. That's all I kept thinking. Um, anyway. And he said, if you just put the work in, I'll pass you. So I did. I went to class. I went to an extra class every day with him. And he worked an extra half hour every day. He passed me. And that was the year, that month, I got offered to turn pro. And I signed a pro contract. And I remember I came back and I, I bought him a gift. It wasn't a whole, it wasn't a big thing. It was like a briefcase or something. Thanking him for not, you know, for being so patient with me and being so nice to me. He was so grateful. And Hmm. It was always sort of, when I signed, my dad said, you're going to stay pro hockey. You're going to stay in high school till you're 18. I don't care what you do, but you're going to school till you're 18. So here I am playing pro hockey. I and was, going to high school? I was picking up my teammate's daughter. We were in the same class. <laughs> no way. <laughs> the guy's name was Jim Nielsen, and I would pick his daughter up. We were in the same school, same class. Then I'd go to practice. <laughs> You were so, like Icevis Presley. <laughs> so <laughs> the principal called me in one day and he said, son, I don't know. You're not going to amount to anything. You're missing too many classes. God, God. And I'm like, well, and he said, you know, I should just kick you out. And I said, listen, it was like early January. And I said, listen, do me a favor. And he goes, what? I said, give me till January 26. And if I haven't changed my act by then, you can kick me out. But I knew I couldn't go to class because we were always traveling and playing. I was playing pro hockey, playing in Quebec City and going to Cincinnati and And Birmingham. did you have an ego? Were you in class? Were you like the Fonz at this no, point I in class? Sat, I sat in the back corner. <laughs> I just mind my own business. So the day I turned 18, I walked into the principal and I said, I just want to thank you for not kick, kicking me out, but I quit. I'm oh. done. And I quit school. And my, I said, I called my dad and, and, and my dad said, well, you promised me to stay to 18 because that's the contract fair. wasn't valid unless he would sign it. Yeah, unless your father on, would sign it. Because I wasn't 18 yet. Wow. And so he said, I'll sign it, but you got to stay in high school. So did you ever finish high school technically? Um, no, but I'm a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean anything? <laughs> so I'm an honorary doctor. Um, hey, it counts to me, yeah. bro. So Dude, if you get most of I, the 12 grades, no, I think that's a lot. People are always like, you got to do all of them. Yeah. Um, I'll give you an example. Actually, like, you can see why he became so great because, like, obviously, he had a good grounding with his family, his father, uh, focus on, on education as much as being, like, a good, uh, like, a good influence for his sport as well, not being too strong, but being a little bit strong and stuff like that, just getting the balance right. Uh, 
Yeah, tell me what you think about that as well. Like, how if you got kids who play hockey or play any sports, how do you teach them or how do you like push them or not push them? Like, my son's five. He's been playing like soccer, or football for about a year. And sometimes it's hard for me not to be like too pushy, but you still want to give them that drive and things like. Even though he's very, very young, of course, but it's like you want them to get the most out of it. Uh, tell me how you are in that sort of situation. When I was fifteen years old, I was playing on a junior hockey team. Mm-hmm. And it was so exciting because my one of my teammates was Murray Howe, who was Gordy Howe's youngest son. Oh, wow. And he's just a wonderful kid. And I wore number nine that year because I always loved Gordy. Mm-hmm. And so when he came in, I said, look, you should wear number nine. Your dad's Gordy Howe. I'll switch my number. Out, out. And he goes, no, 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 no. This is, Wayne, this is my last year of hockey. Um, I'm going to enjoy it. And I go, okay. He goes, I'm going to be a doctor. He was a really intelligent guy, and he did go on to become a doctor. So we get on the team bus and we travel to the city. He he get on there and he have all these books, right? And I'd get on no books, and he goes, Wayne, you got you got to get your education. You gotta. I go, I'm going to a hockey game. I can't think about reading right now and doing homework. And so about two weeks later, I got on the bus and I had like five or six books. I sit down beside him and he he goes, good to see you're taking notes here, Wayne. That's good. Good for you. And he said, he goes, what do you got? Geography, history. I go, well, I got Gordie Howe, hockey my way. (laughs) Gordie Howe, hockey tips. I said, you want to be a doctor? Gordie Howe sings Christmas. You want to be a doctor? I want to be a hockey player. (laughs) Gordie was so nice. He was just, so it was a dinner. It was a charity dinner. This is an incredible story. Uh Uh-huh. And... 700 people that were at the dinner, and that was the year I scored 400 goals. Mm-hmm. So the city wanted me to be part of it. A year he scored and you know, when you're 10 years goals. old, you can't even stand up and do a speech in front of your classmates, right? Oh, so yeah. they had told the guy. So you're only 10 at this time. Yeah. So okay. they had told the MC, Wayne, just introduce him. He's not going to talk. And so um, <laughs> Joe Theismann was there. What? Uh, yeah. Gordy Howe. When you were 10? Yeah. Sandy Hawley, a famous jockey. And so they all get up and they trying to talk for seven or eight minutes and people laugh and giggle. So the guy announces my name and I'm like, oh no, And I, I, I'm already frozen. And Gordy says to me, now listen, when you go up there, just tell them you're lost without your skates and your hockey stick. <laughs> and so I got, okay, okay. So I got up there and I was shaking. And I, I remember I said, thank you. And I started bawling. I got a standing ovation. I went and sat down. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you remember like the first date you ever went on when you were a kid or something like that? Oh, uh, it really... Hockey was my life. It was, huh? Yeah, it was your girlfriend. Have, I didn't have one. Just hockey. Yeah. Just, you know, I had a um, junior A coach when I was 16 years old playing with 19, 20 year olds. And he would say, playing junior hockey is really hard. Um, but being a professional hockey player is a great life. And so you said, you got hockey, you hmm. got um, uh, schooling, and you got. Uh, nightlife and you can only do two of the three mm. so make sure you pick the right two so when you're 16 years old it was my life I loved lived and died it go to school from 8 30 to 3 o'clock practice four to six every night play usually Thursday Saturday Sunday back to school right. same thing same routine we, it's actually like quite true like it's a like not to go too far from what we're talking about with hockey and stuff but being from Scotland Obviously, football's huge there, but children, and there's a lot of very talented young players and stuff, but when they get to that sort of teenage uh, age, because alcohol and drinking is such an issue in Scotland, like they all just turn to, like, they go for the nightlife, most of them, and so many talented players actually don't fulfil that potential that they could have, and it's one reason why Scotland's not very good at football these days. Uh, but is there any players, like, that were young hockey players or anything like that, maybe you knew who chose the nightlife or chose the alternative life that it wasn't never took them to their real potential when you listen when you see like how you were compared to like how some other players were right mm-hmm. did you think that you almost had like a uh abnormality how much you liked it or how much you focused on it like was it that kind of thing <clears throat> um because i no, see players i have friends that are good at things and friends that really are let's put it this way um i knew there's a lot of other really good players and athletes but for us, for me, you know, especially when I got to be 16, I knew, I knew that was my life. Like, I knew I wasn't going to be a great student. Um, I knew it was going to be hard for me to get a college degree. I, I understood that. I knew 
my forte was going to be hockey. And growing up playing baseball, track and field, lacrosse, and I encourage parents all the time, all those sports helped my hockey. Oh, yeah. And so by the time the I got to 16, about, I was like, actually. okay, this is what I'm going to do. I, I want to be a professional hockey player. Um, and so I, I really, that was my focus. And the only advice my dad used to say, give me, really was, um, you got a great opportunity here to really have a wonderful life. Mm. And the good Lord blessed you with a love and a passion like I've never seen before. And sort of like, don't blow it, don't throw it away. And so I always kind of thought that, that I never thought I was missing out going to a different city or going here or doing this. I, if I was, my enjoyment was being on the ice. Yeah. I didn't think I was missing anything else. Like, wow. I never even, never even phased me. Yeah, that right? was the thing. And, yeah. you know, I can remember, um, my dad saying, you know, you're going to have so many opportunities here for some reason, you know, with your aunt being down syndrome and gr you growing up with that. And the Canadian Institute for the Blind was in my hometown of Brantford. Like there's more than just hockey. Like you're going to be one day you're going to be a symbol for good things. Mm. And so I always I kind of grew up with it. Right. It was that was kind of my education. What a powerful thing to say to a child, too, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. that they have the that they if they do their best, you know, not even do their best, but if they, they make can help the, people, they make enough effort that they have a the possibility to be a, a symbol for for good. Yeah. And so that's really powerful. Yeah. And so, you know, I just, I mean, that's I guess you know I, I became Wayne Gretzky, and so I just had a love for it. That's all. Is it hard? Like, did it trust, ever... trust me? There was a lot of guys with more talent than I had. Right. There's a lot of guys who were better than I was. Really. And then there's some guys that I just wanted it more than. Yeah. But by by no means was I the best player ever. There were so many great players. I'm fine. I'm happy with what I accomplished. I'm happy. I'm, I'm. I did it. I'm happy. I'm done. But that's all kind of behind me now. I don't worry about it. It's like uh, I get parents that come up to me, and you know. <clears throat> Mothers are hardest, right? And my mom was worse too. She chased down Bobby Hall to get an autograph for me. And <laughs> and so when moms grabbed me, I go, I get it, I get it. My mom did it to, for me too. But the moms will always say to me, will you tell my son how many hours a day he used to practice? And I go, that's not it. And she go, what do you mean? And I go, that's not it. I said, I just did it because I loved it. If you have to say you got to be out there two hours or three hours, you're in the wrong thing. Mm. I just was there all day long because I loved it. Yeah, hey, pretty women. Such a good interview, man. That's actually like something like not just even hockey fans, anybody that's like a parent, anything like that should learn about man. Just uh, it's very inspiring. Such a like like he's the greatest hockey player ever, man, and you can like tap into that like fountain of knowledge and how he came to be. Uh, that one about it's not about like forcing your kids or yourself to do something a lot if you don't love it. Like you need to have that like passion or love to uh to do it or you're, you're just going to get sick of it eventually it's like one of those things things need to be fun you need to enjoy it you need to love it i guess you can learn to love these sort of things as well uh, as long as it's fun and enjoyable but yeah really cool man a legend from young up there on stage and things at such a young age like what a crazy life actually and then to actually fulfill that potential just pretty perfect man so yeah i guess it comes from a good solid foundation his family and so on and just everything just yeah it was great for him so tell me more about what you think about wayne gretzky tell me what you think about what you spoke about in this interview thanks <laughs>